Are you ready to branch out, to take a leap of faith, to love yourself and others fully? Then let go of whatever no longer serves you to take action now on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up and letting it go. Erica will energize and excite you to power up your passionate dream that sets your soul on fire. With Erica's E3 approach, equipping, empowering, and enlightening yourself so you can be yourself for yourself. Get ready and get rooted to live a life without regrets, without what ifs, without should haves, and especially without empty feelings from a life unexplored. This hit show helps you build powerful and intentional roots to live it up, love it up, and let it go. Get fearlessly ready and powerfully rooted in your yes with your host, Erica Gifford Mills, and be fearless about your more and stand in your yes. Now on Get Rooted Radio. Welcome everyone. I am Erica Gifford Mills and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio, living it up, loving it up, letting it go right here on Transformation Talk Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in either live or on the replay. Your continued support is so much appreciated. And a big shout out to our producer, Edvin. Hey, Edvin, how are you doing today? Um, I'm doing pretty good. Or, oh, oh, you might be on mute, Edvin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Hey, I haven't said that today, so I can put that on my Zoom bingo. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just so used to uh, muting right afterwards, and then I have to go right back into Zoom on mute, then I unmute. And, uh, no. Yeah, we're good, no though. Worries. We're good. So <laughs> I've got a question for you. Have you heard of manifesting? Yeah, I did um, hear of manifesting before. Um, it's something that actually that... Um, it's not something that I really believe in because I come from a different religious background, but it really ties in with what my mom would always tell me that, you know, sometimes things are kind of guided for you. And I believe that if you really manifest what you want to um, really happen to you in life, that you can actually do it. And things that aren't deserved for you, then, you know, it's something that you kind of have to put up with and just agree that, hey, this job is not for me. But yeah, you can really manifest things in life if you really try hard enough. I love that. Well, manifesting is what this episode is all about. And for those listeners who may not be familiar with manifestation, it is bringing something tangible into your life through attraction and belief. If you think it, it will come, right? I, I think of the... Um, the baseball movie, you know, if you build it, they will come, right? Um, but that's whether that is through your thoughts, your actions, beliefs, and emotions. But our guest today will tell you it is so much more. Let me introduce you to Naz Rose, a lifelong manifester. Naz is a certified life and spiritual coach and owner of Believe It Life Coaching, known as the Soul Coach. Naz is responsible for creating the Soul Refresh Program, an alternative mental health program designed for ambitious women that mixes aspects of traditional therapy, spiritual counseling, and life coaching. When she's not cheering on and admiring the inner work and success of her clients, she can be found on the beach relaxing with her husband and two young sons in Miami, Florida. Thanks so much for joining us, Naz. Tell us how you got into this aspect of coaching and how you got the name The Soul Coach. <laughs> so first of all, thank you so much, Erica, for having me here um, and for that wonderful introduction. That was a mouthful. <laughs> so thank you for having me here. I, um, I got into uh, coaching after 16 years in the marketing field, and I'll talk to you more about that um, later on uh, today. But um, I got into it after a very long time in marketing, and I... Uh, started looking into my purpose. I started really experimenting with what I wanted because I had gotten, um, you know, so frustrated with the process of being in corporate America and uh, trying to kind of, you know, do this thing every day that was not something that was motivating me anymore. 
And so I started to look what, into what is really my purpose? What do I really want to do? Where do I really want to be? And I did a lot of that inner work um, and came out of that through the process of manifestation with the business I have today, the title I have today, and the work that I do today. Well, I, for one, appreciate what you do. So tell us, I mean, what is the secret to manifesting? <laughs> I feel like I'm about to give away this really big. <laughs> this really That's big it, listeners. Listen up. Listen up. She's telling the secrets. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, what I found is, and I'm a personal development junkie. Let me say that off the bat. I love personal development books, personal development lectures, classes. I love everything having to do with personal development. And so, you know, my entire life, I read all the books, uh, stumbled upon the law of attraction and books that taught it and listened to, you know, the people speaking about it. And through my own process, what I found um, is that a lot of these things teach you to focus on the things that you want to manifest, right? So I want to manifest a Lamborghini, a house, uh, the perfect partner, uh, you know, wealth. I want to manifest all of these things. And it is a big disservice to the process of manifestation because the key and the secret to manifesting the things that we want is to focus on the feelings and not the things right? So it may be that you're trying to say, I want to manifest, um, you know, a partner or a car or a house, but it's those things come with a feeling associated to them. And that's really where the law of attraction and manifestation takes the heat and turns it up and brings it to life is when you take it from the things and peel it back into feelings. I couldn't agree with you more. And that's one thing I work with, with my clients is so not only what you, what do you want, but how do you want to feel? Yeah. And you know, looking at those times where you were the most joyful in your life, where you had the greatest sense of accomplishment, or you felt secure, you know, what, when you think about those feelings, mm -hmm. what was going on, right? So how does that often get overlooked? you know, this, this looking at the focusing on the feelings and not the things. Mm -hmm. I think it gets overlooked a lot because as humans, and I don't know if you run into this with your own clients, but I run into it with my clients when we first start working together, we want uh, the, the checklist, right? Here's a checklist of exactly what you have to do to manifest it, write it 33 times a day for 33 days, or, you know, put it in, in quadrants in your vision board. People want the short, you know, to-do list so that they can get to their manifestation. So what happens a lot of times is people sell that, right? They sell the checklist instead of telling people it's a process. And until you know the feeling that you want and really match the energy of that feeling continuously day after day, you're just going to be running down a checklist of things that you have to do and quite possibly not get to the destination that you want. So I think it's it's a two-part process. People want uh, the, the formula with the checklist and there are many people out there who are ready to capitalize on that. And so they yeah. keep, you know, feeding it back and forth to each other. Yeah, it's not a quick fix, right? Just like with exactly. anything, whether it's your um, physical health, your mental health, you know, you, you're not going to work out, you know, seven days a week and I'll immediately be healthier or thinner. You know, right. what other things are you doing? Are you eating right? Are your stress level? Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it is, it's a whole process and, and you need to trust that process. Yes, and, absolutely. And I think that is. Um, so how do we go about figuring out, you know, what are feelings behind the things that they want? How, how do we capture that? Because that's really hard. It's kind of like finding the root cause of something. Um, yeah. You know, you, you write it down or like if you are have an upset stomach um, constantly and you're writing mm -hmm. down, well, what was I eating that day to make sure that I don't repeat that? Mm -hmm. Are we looking at 
other things behind that too, because if you're not, you know, sleeping well, if you have mm -hmm. financial issues, you know, whatever that is. So what is the process to figure out the feelings behind the wants? So the process is actually, um, I tell my clients, it's not as complicated as we think. It's really a peel back, you know, peeling back of layers and of asking questions. So what I'll, I'll tell people to do is write down what are the things that you want, right? The car, the house, the partner, the, you know, trips around the world. What are the things that you want? And then right under that, I would like you to write why. Why do I want these things, right? And then once you answer why, somewhere in there, ask yourself, what do I think that that's going to make me feel? What is the feeling underneath this why? So it's very much like what life coaches do. It's a series of questions. Why? 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 Peeling back until you get to the feeling. And, and that actually is a very easy process when you're honest with yourself, right? So for instance, a lot of people will say, well, I want to make a million dollars, okay? And sometimes when you peel that back um, and you'll say, you know, what is it about a million dollars that you think you'll achieve? And they'll say, uh, well, I'm just going to feel less stressed about my decisions. And so you peel that back and you go, well, what, why do you think that that's going to take away from your stress? And they say, oh, because I'll be able to finally pay off all my, my bills and feel peace. Right. And then it's like, boom, now you've landed. What you really want is peace when it comes to your finances. And now we have something to work with to match that energetically. Yeah, I, I jokingly told somebody once, you know, being a life coach is kind of like being a kid. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, because it's, but why? But why? But why? Oh, but why? <laughs> and, and, and as much as that can be frustrating to people, it is. It's, it's it because is. sometimes we're not honest with ourselves. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll first to raise my hand. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm not always oh, honest right. with myself. And mm -hmm. it's, we have to be, you know, mm -hmm. honest with why do you want that house? Is it because that gives you a sense of security? Is it mm -hmm. something you do? have growing up? Is it something? Mm -hmm. And so you do need to really, mm -hmm. like you said, peel back that onion and find yeah. out um, because that is why it's so important to focus on the feelings and not the things. Not the things. Yeah. Agreed a hundred percent. Well, we are talking about manifestation, but when we come back, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to get into talking about creating a personal vision. And that's going to be something you want to definitely tune back into. But before we go, Naz, tell folks how they can reach you. I can be found primarily on Instagram at Believe It Coach. Uh, but you can also find me on my website, BelieveItLifeCoaching.com. And that has all of my information, phone number, company phone number, email, etc. Awesome. Thank you so much. You are listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any portion of today's episode, you can catch it on GetRootedRadio.com. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Don't forget to subscribe online to receive the latest news, events, specials, and words of encouragement. Go to GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Naz Rose. Thanks for joining us again today, Naz. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Well, I am so glad for you to be here because we've been talking all about the law of attraction manifestation. And with this comes a personal vision. So mm -hmm. what is a personal vision? So a personal vision is much like a corporate vision, but obviously for the individual, right? So whenever um, I work with a client and we hone in on the feeling, right, that they really want to accomplish, the next step is always getting them to write a personal vision. And I want them always to write it on the basis of that feeling. So where are they going to be when they achieve this feeling? What are they going to feel like? What, who, is, who is around them? Uh, what are they doing in their lives? Um, you know, what kinds of risks are they taking? What kinds of things are they not doing? So it's a little bit of a summary based on the feelings that they really want to achieve. 
almost like a, a guide to determine maybe career pursuits, making important yes. life decisions, you know, planning exactly. how you'll accomplish a goal. Yes, um, yes. yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So just like, you know, the secrets, right? What, what, are, what are some of the best ingredients, would you say, are in a personal vision? You know, what are the, the key criteria that you should have in a personal vision? Mm -hmm. So funny thing, when I, I, I told you I had, I come from corporate and I was in marketing. I worked as a marketing manager and marketing director for 16 years. So I, I, in one of the most interesting things I found when I was working um, in that career was that main stakeholders in, a, in, a, in any field have certain ingredients in their mission and vision statements that the same people in that uh, field don't have. And so they come in in number two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So for instance, I'll read you, I, I took some notes on two that I really wanted to read for you because I think it drives the point home. So one, I'll say, who's the leader? I'm not gonna say who the other one is because I don't wanna make anybody feel that or get anybody in trouble. But um, let's say Nike, right? We know Nike is the leader in its, uh, in its market. Their uh, mission is to bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world, right? The competitor, someone who comes in in another number within that same market, their mission and vision is to be the fastest sports brand in the world. Now, it doesn't seem like there may be too much of a difference there, but it, there is a big difference. And it is, one is focused on who they're serving, right? right? And the other one is focused on themselves. We wanna be the fastest brand and there's no mention of anybody else. So a very key ingredient in a personal vision statement is how, who is going to benefit and how are you gonna help other people when you reach this manifestation that you're gonna to bring to life, when you're in this feeling that you're going to accomplish, how do others benefit from this? It's a very, very important thing to include in a personal vision. Number two is obviously focusing on the feelings like we talked about. So I wouldn't say um, something like I'm making $1 million a year and working for Google and I drive a Mercedes Benz, whatever, right? I would say things like I love um, being in a position that allows me to be a difference maker and I enjoy the abundance that I experience and the experiences that I get to have for me and my family, right? Very, very different. So those key ingredients have to be in there. How do you serve? And how do, you know, how are the, the feelings that you're having within that vision? And I think it's important to know, because if you don't know what you really want, mm -hmm. how do you manifest it, right? So that's right. why this personal vision is so important. Is, Absolutely. And it's also opening yourself up to allowing other possibilities because mm -hmm. you might just, I mean, I've been through it. I thought I wanted something. And then when I got it, it was like, oh, maybe, <laughs> no, I didn't want this. <laughs> and yes. And it's because it's that very thing. Did mm -hmm. I think what it would feel like? Did, mm -hmm. you know, did I know what I really wanted? And I think right. that's where sometimes people get stuck. So putting Absolutely. these ingredients together mm -hmm. is important for to, to really do your personal vision so you can get to truly mm -hmm. the great stages of manifestation. And not just that, but another key thing in there is that you open up the possibilities, right? right? Instead of saying the only way that I can get to this feeling is if this wonderful universal great source, you know, they can do anything for me only gives it to me through this avenue or right. these ways, right? right? Working for Google, making a million dollars, driving this car, instead of putting the power where it is, which is in divine source and saying, I want to feel this way. And whatever ways you think get me there the best way possible, then I leave that to you, right? Yeah. It's kind of like, you are going. You don't go to the doctor and tell the doctor what the doctor has to do to fix your problem. You also don't tell spirit what spirit needs to do to get you to feel a certain way. You just say, 
I want this feeling and I know that you can give it to me. However you find that's the best possible route, then you do that, right? Absolutely. Very different process, very different. And it's, and you have to be, like you said, you have to be open to it. You have to trust mm-hmm. the process. Absolutely. So you're, you had talked about the successful companies, you know, what they have mm-hmm. in their vision, vision statements. Mm-hmm. So having those same sort of things in our personal vision statements, of course, mm-hmm. is, is going to matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to make a big difference into how the process plays out. And so what are three ingredients that you would need to have in a personal vision statement? Well, they would include what I said, right? Focus on the feelings in that vision. Um, Make sure that you include how it benefits others or how you help other people and that you have keywords of gratefulness, right? So I'm so happy to be where I am. I'm so, you know, overjoyed by what I get to do every day. I love that I've been put in a position where I can live my purpose out and help other people. Those sorts of words of gratefulness are extremely important in there. I would say those are the big three. Perfect. So what is something that you would maybe not include in your personal vision? (laughs) Number one, without a doubt, is anybody else, right? We can only manifest on our behalf. We cannot manifest for other people because there's a little thing, I don't know if you've heard it, but free will. And (laughs) we can't... (laughs) We can't try to manifest for other people. So if a client comes to me and says, I want to have a relationship full of love, whatever, with this person, I, no, that's a no-go. We cannot include other people. Now, if you come to me with this person and you both say, we want to manifest this relationship of love and understanding together, then we can work on that. But a big no-no is other people. And I think, you know, as a mom and moms that I work with, a lot of times we try to manifest on behalf of our kids or on behalf of our spouse or our parents. No, no, nobody else in the personal vision except, you know, words of gratefulness. I'm so glad I get to share this with my kids or I'm so glad I get to live this with this person, et cetera. But no manifesting you know, on behalf of other people. <laughs> darn, darn that free will. Oh, no. <laughs> Prayer is good. Pray so I say, it doesn't mean you can't pray for them. That's yes, exactly. absolutely. You can pray, but you cannot manifest on behalf of someone else. Definitely a no, no. How about any, any other, anything else that you shouldn't include? I feel like anything related to the past, right? So something like, I'm so glad that I finally um, healed from this experience, or I'm so glad that I finally let that thing go. You know, personal uh, vision is really the future. So we don't want to bring anything, uh, you know, relating to the past, past things, past traumas and stuff into that, into that vision. We want to make sure that we're focused on what's coming up and not necessarily, you know, anything having to do with the past. Good tips. Nobody (laughs) else and no past. And I I like to tell people, you can't, you know, stop looking in the rear of your mirror. You're not, you're not there anymore. We're moving forward, you know, be present in the moment and, you know, look towards the future, but Mm -hmm. you can't, Mm -hmm. you can't change the past. So just, you can't, you can't change it. You don't don't want to bring it. You don't, you don't want to bring it with you into this new peaceful and beautiful future that you're trying to create for yourself. So, you know, if there are things ever still lingering there, we always, you know, as a coach, I always refer people to therapists or people that can help them to deal with any traumas that may be stopping them from really manifesting, you know, their, their biggest dreams. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss cleaning up. And it's not in what the manner in which you think. But Naz, I saw actually today on your Instagram that you have a upcoming series. So tell yes. folks about that. Yes, I am launching the uh, Manifesting with Naz group course which registration is open for it now, but the class starts August 2nd and it's gonna be a group. I'm limiting it to six people. It's going to be once a week, a live call with me in this group. And we're going to be talking about, you know, people's 
big visions, bringing them to life, and this process that we're discussing today and applying it to each of those individuals' lives. So yes, some more information is on my website, believeitlifecoaching.com, and it's going to be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> so you heard that, listeners. Go out and check that out. So we're going to take that quick break, and when we come back, we're talking cleaning up. I am Erica Gifford-Mills, and you are listening to Get Rooted Radio. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford-Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Don't forget to visit GetRootedRadio.com to listen to a replay of this episode, sign up for helpful tips, and learn about upcoming events. That's GetRootedRadio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Naz Rose. Thanks for joining us today, Naz. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited. (laughs) Well, during the last segments, we were talking about personal vision and what ingredients are included in the personal vision. Um, But once we have established this and we've kind of made a mess with all this ingredients laying around, you know, you suggest cleaning up. So what do you mean by clean up? So cleaning up is actually a a very common and popular and um, ancient uh, kind of art of manifesting. Um, It's a very prominent culture in, in, you know, in Asia and in India where space literally needs to be created for your manifestations to appear, right? And so when I talk about cleanup, I talk about not just literal, but, you know, metaphorical. I'm talking about all the cleaning up that you can do in many different ways. So for instance, if someone is trying to manifest um, abundance, I think that you should have a clean wallet. I'm going to suggest that you clean your receipts from 2009, that you go through your drawer where you keep you know, your bills and clean it up. Cleaning up physically creates space for new energy to come in. So it's a very, very important part of the manifestation process. Um, and this can happen in anything that you're trying to manifest. So for, you know, for someone who's trying to manifest a relationship, I had a client recently, recently, actually, who said, you know, I really, I'm ready. It's been a long time and I'm ready for a relationship. And I said, great. We went through the process that we talked about. Why do you want to be in a relationship? You know, let's write your vision. And then I said, all right, well, tell me about your space. Um, and I asked specifically about her, um, her bathroom where she keeps all of her stuff. And she's like, oh yeah, all my stuff is everywhere. And I'm like, well, energetically, you don't have space to receive someone. So I'm going to need you to go in there, clean out and create space right? It's little things like that that make a big difference when it comes to your manifestations, making room, creating space. And I think that's important. It's almost like, you know, you're decluttering, right? You're, yes. you're making that space and allowing mm-hmm. that space mm-hmm. for something else to come in. Mm-hmm. And, and if you think of it literally, right? Like, okay, but if I'm full, all this stuff is full, where mm-hmm. is it going to go? You know, yeah. I would say, where is it going to seep in? Um, <laughs> and you, and There's I think, to go. <laughs> no, exactly. And I think, you know, that to the, the decluttering, the cleaning up, you need yeah. to get over whatever is blocking you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of, again, almost going back to the, why do you want to feel this way? What's hindering you? Do you have negative mm-hmm. self-talk or do you have, mm-hmm. you know, those negative feelings about something that, mm-hmm. that is holding you back from moving yes. forward? Yes. And sometimes those feelings get disclosed when you're peeling back from the things to the feelings, right? So it'll say, it, it'll, you might find something in there, a mindset that someone has that's really what's blocking their manifestation. So they want something, but it's a, a, a reflection of something that's a, a deficit that they see in their lives and they're trying to fulfill it through these things, right? We want to get rid of that mindset. We want to clean it out so that things can flow more easily and in, in, you know, into their lives. So it is a process of looking at everything and seeing not only my physical space, but in my emotional space, 
what am I holding on to and who am I holding on to or what am I holding on to that needs to be cleaned up and cleaned out? You're not going to be able to get into that vortex if you, no, if you're, yeah, no, if something's stopping you or holding you back, right. To, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever, whatever it is, right. If it's yeah. a person, a place, a thing, a feeling, you know, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. while people are doing this cleaning, decluttering process, mm-hmm. what can people expect, right? Are there feelings or emotions or mm-hmm. even, you know, losses that might be coming up with it? Mm, well, you know, one of the, the things I tell people all the time is you're going to lose some stuff, right? You're going to lose some stuff when you manifest. Why? Because when you focus on your feeling and you start to say, I'm going to, you know, go toward that feeling, there are going to be people, situations, places that no longer match that energy, right? The manifested version of yourself doesn't match uh, some of the things around you. You can't go where you're going with everything exactly as you have it. And the bigger the vision is for you, then the bigger that cleaning out process is. The universe comes in and it doesn't do it just for us. It does it for everyone around in our lives, right? So if you're trying to go somewhere and a a person, a friend isn't equipped to go with you where you're going because it's gonna cause a riff in your friendship or it's gonna create jealousy or some sort of feeling you don't feel supported in your role, then the universe is gonna come in and do the best thing that it can for everyone by creating maybe some distance or completely cleaning this person out of your life. So yes, when you're getting prepared to create a, a big vision for yourself or manifest something, you have to be ready for the universe to come in. And then sometimes it can be a vicious cleaner, you know, it can be really, <laughs> it can it's a Hoover in, back, <laughs> you know, sponges, Clorox, it can be a very vicious cleaner, but it's always perfectly aligned for everyone, not just for, our, for us, but for everyone involved in the situation. So, yeah. And I think if people are I don't want to say used to it, but if they accept that, because mm-hmm. people come into our lives for mm-hmm. a variety of different reasons at different stages and seasons of our life. And just Mm -hmm. because you may not no longer be friends, doesn't mean that you can't still care about them or, or, you know, feel for them. Um, And it's just a matter of you're going in different directions. I mean, you think about it, you're not always friends with the people you were in elementary school, in Mm -hmm. high school, in college. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mm -hmm. I don't have some of the same friends I did when my son was in school, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you guys, it's the the mom friends, the mommy friends, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and it's because they they were there for a certain time in my life, and mm-hmm. you have to be prepared to. You can mourn that loss, but then yeah. you can move forward, and mm-hmm. and it's for the best on many occasions. I mean, just like in a toxic relationship or mm-hmm. in just in a place where you're trying to grow and somebody's holding you back. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have to cut ties. You do. You do. And the the thing is we get, we get really emotional about it and that's normal, but we we get very emotional about it. And then what happens is we continue to get, you know, clues as to the fact that we have to let these things go, right? Things will keep happening because really the universe needs to clean everything out. It sees that, that certain, everything can't come with you, right? Every situation can't be there for you. Or a lot of times um, you're not in the best place to receive. And so it moves you elsewhere, right? It says, well, you're not gonna bloom with this vision that you have here. So I'm gonna create a certain pattern of loss or a big event in your life that will cause you to feel moved and literally move yourself to another place where these things can really happen for you. So. It's like Edwin said earlier, right? It's maybe you weren't ready to receive it. Maybe you didn't deserve it. 
Yes. <laughs> and, and I always think, think of it as seasons, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the trees lose their leaves, the, the flowers mm -hmm. stop blooming so that there can be that regrowth and come yeah. back stronger, more beautiful. Um, you know, just like I wish I was, a, could be a caterpillar <laughs> because then I could eat anything I wanted, sleep for two weeks and wake up beautiful. But, um, but it's, it is, it's that process, right? That transition that needs to take place. And if it's not happening, it could be for, you know, a variety of different reasons. It doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it just means keep going. Yeah, keep going, keep going. And the, the people and situations and things that are supposed to come with you will. So it, it does, um, at a certain point, when you've manifested things enough and when you use this process actively, you almost see that as a key indication that the process is taking place, right? When, when you start to see, oh, that person is not starting to fit into you know, the lifestyle, my lifestyle, the way they used to, or we don't vibe the same way that we used to, or um, I don't feel as comfortable in this job as I used to. I don't love it as much. You kind of start to take that as a red receipt from the universe, right? And you, it, it, you start to see, okay, things are moving and, you know, the universe got my, my thing and it, it's agreeing with me on the next step. And now it's doing this beautiful process of cleaning out you kind of sit back and you let it. A lot of times I tell people, if you don't, you don't really have to let people, things, places go. The universe, you know, cleans it for you. All you have yeah. to do is not get in the way, right? Yes. You kind of step back <laughs> and you don't let, try to control it. <laughs> exactly. Let let it do what it does and just step back. Yes. That is awesome. So we're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, let's discuss habits you can incorporate for the future you. But before we go, Naz, tell folks how they can reach you again. You can find me on Instagram at Believe It Coach or on my website, believeitlifecoaching.com, which has all of my information where I can be reached and all of my programs. Awesome. Thanks, Naz. This You're is welcome. Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills, living it up, loving it up, letting it go. If you missed any of the information during the last segments, go to getrootedradio.com. That's getrootedradio.com to listen to the replay. Don't forget to subscribe, sign up for tips and special events and pricing for upcoming coaching sessions at getrootedradio.com. Welcome back to my guest, Naz Rose. Naz, tell folks how they can learn more about your services. So they can visit my website, believeitlifecoaching.com, or they can DM me on Instagram at believeitcoach. And you have a, a new series coming up starting in August. Tell folks about yes. that. Yes. So I'm kicking off the Manifesting with NAS group course. It's going to be a group of six, I have six spots available and we are going to meet once a week. I will be there live coaching uh, people through their visions, their manifestations. It's going to be all about the man magic of manifesting from focusing on the feelings to creating habits, to cleaning, et cetera, taking big visions, six women with big visions who want to bring them to life. And that's kicking off August 2nd, but registration is open as of today. Wonderful. So check out her website, check out the Instagram and get in contact. Yes. So we've been talking all about manifestation um, and the ingredients, creating a personal vision, cleaning out so that we're making room for things to come to us. But how do we incorporate it? You know, you said you have a two minute habit to yes. help do this. Tell us about that. So this is something um, that I learned about in the book Atomic Habits from James Clear, which is a wonderful, wonderful book. I loved it. And, um, and, and he really talks about taking um, actionable, creating actionable two-minute habits that are kind of like gateway habits that get us 
uh, in route to becoming our future selves, right? So um, whenever we, we folk get down to what the feeling is, when we write the personal vision, and then once we start cleaning, we want to really start to get into the energy of future us, right? So what is that person doing? details like what are they doing what do they eat where do they like to go what kinds of activities do they like to to take part in um things like that and and when we hone in on what some of those things are we can peel back and create habits that start to get us to align with what that future us does so what are some of the must haves, like you said, for, for creating that two minute habit, you, mm -hmm. you have the kind of the processes or the things that people do, mm -hmm. but is there just like the ingredients for the personal mm -hmm. vision? Are there certain ingredients in this two minute yes. habit? Yes. So it has to be easy for you, right? It has to be easy for you to do. And it literally has to take you no more than two minutes to start. So let's say you want to, future you is an entrepreneur, right? And that vision for you of being an entrepreneur includes being fit, right? Because you need to be mentally clear. You need, your, you need to have your body working for you. You need to look good, maybe because you do public speaking, whatever it is. You will know that future you has a fit a uh, body and a clear mind. So you'll say, okay, future me runs in order to get to that process. Now you're not gonna go and say, okay, future me runs and walk out of your door and start running. What you're going to do is you're gonna peel that back and say, okay, I know that the excuse that I make for myself to run every morning is that I haven't picked out my clothes or that I can't find my shoes or I can't find socks. So you create the habit of, for instance, putting your shoes out every night and putting out your clothes. That's a habit that takes you no more than two minutes and it's easy for you to do in the evening as opposed to in the morning. It's a gateway habit to the big habit. Does that? That and that is, I think that's exactly what you said, the gateway, right? Yes. It's, it's those little steps that you don't think are important that mm -hmm. set the foundation, right? Those are the building blocks. Those are the Absolutely. things that are going to make the foundation so it doesn't tip over. And yes. I think that people overlook those, right? They think, oh, mm -hmm. I need to um, go buy running, sh really expensive running shoes and I need to get a coach and I need to yes. do this. It's the little things because those little steps matter. Yes, yes. The little, the little steps are the ones that matter the most when done consistently because the person who lays their shoes out and their clothes the night before and gets up every morning and doesn't have an excuse for not getting up, right? They've eliminated a barrier to entry to their habit. Those people are going to get up, they're gonna get dressed and then they're gonna walk. And then once they begin to walk, they're gonna say, oh, I feel like maybe today I can walk and jog. And then you walk and jog. And those same people will be the people who, because it was so easy to start with, they're gonna maintain it, right? because all they're thinking about is that initial habit that they have to do continuously. They're not thinking, I have to walk out the door and run three miles every day. You sabotage your own success when you do that. And I think that's what happens a lot of times with people who wanna manifest something. They'll say, I wanna manifest this big vision and they get overwhelmed by the bigger things that have to be done. Instead of sitting down and saying, okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is to make sure that I grow my email list. And in order to do that, I'm going to create uh, some sort of, uh, you know, free reading material that somebody can come to my website, read and get, you know, their email from that, from that material. So what are you going to do? You're going to sit down and simply write a paper. Instead of saying, I'm going to get a thousand subscribers to my email list. You're just thinking about one small thing you have to do. And then if you do that consistently, you will create the big changes. The big changes will create themselves pretty much alone without you having to worry about them. And I think that's very important for people to remember is that you get yourself, you block yourself because yes. you might have this 
I, I, and I heard this once that the big, hairy, audacious goal, right? You <laughs> have this huge thing that is scary. Like, what, why did I say I was going to do that? You know, yeah. and and then they you block it, right? Because you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. I don't even know where to start. And mm -hmm. it's the starting, right? It's taking right. those little steps, doing those two minute habits that are mm -hmm. going to then build up over time to get you where you need to be. Yes, exactly. The two well, minute habit is all important in anything that you do, but particularly when you're trying to manifest the big vision, it just keeps you grounded it keeps you you know with with just what's in front of you you know there instead of the entire vision which can be so scary and and we can get overwhelmed and then we get into this cycle of I didn't do it and then you feel bad for yourself because you feel like you don't have what it takes when really you just had to do one small thing yes. at a time consistently couldn't agree with you more and consistency and determination yes. and being open to receive are all so important aspects when you're talking manifestation. Absolutely. Yeah. It's action, right? Yes. So sometimes that's another disservice that, that, you know, gets done out there regarding the law of attraction is, oh, you just, you think about what you want and then you just sit there and you think about it, but that's, you have to energetically show up every day for your vision that's so important you have to take action and it sometimes it comes with those small habits that you know over time they turn into the vision yeah. and it's and that's why the feelings are so important because yes. if you know that this is what you really want and you yeah. you're working toward it for yourself mm -hmm. you're going to be more apt to do it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah when you know the feeling as well you can put it in front of you every decision that you make oh are you <laughs> <laughs> and welcome the dog is here there you go <laughs> yes he's decided I, uh, to come on in <laughs> every um every uh, once you have the feeling this is what i tell people once you have the feeling you can also make decisions every day based on that feeling if you have a decision in front of you you can say well that one's going to get me closer to my feeling and that one is going to take me the opposite of my feeling so obviously every day you're going to make the decisions that match the feeling that you want to have that's why focus on the feelings not the things is the most important thing that you can do when you're trying to manifest anything. Thanks again, Naz, for being part of the show you're today. Welcome. It has been you're such welcome. a true pleasure. Check her out. You definitely want to work with her. And thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate you having me on the show. And I loved being here. It flew by because you were a pleasure to talk to. And I hope <laughs> Anybody who needs help out there with this reaches out at Believe It Coach or on my website, believeitlifecoaching.com. Thank you, Erica. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you all for tuning in to Get Rooted Radio. If you missed any part of today's episode or you want to listen again, go to getrootedradio.com for the podcast. And don't forget to tune in the first and third Monday of each month at 5 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Central, and 2 p.m. Pacific right here on Transformation Talk Radio. Before I sign off, remember to ask yourself, am I living a rooted life? If the answer is no, take time to think about what you need to do, then take action to make that answer a yes. One way to take action is to set up your free Empower Hour call with me. No charge, no obligation. Go to Get Rooted Radio to find out how I can help you take that action. And if you are ready to live, love, and let go, join me for my signature 12-week group coaching series, The Rooted Life. The series will assist you in achieving your goals and moving forward by letting go of the things that no longer serve you, learning to love yourself and others fully, and living life to its fullest. Go to GetRootedRadio.com to learn more about this 12-week series and get that free Empower Hour. Thank you again for tuning in. Have an amazing day. And I'm looking forward to the next time on Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, letting it go. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to Get Rooted Radio with Erica Gifford Mills. Living it up, loving it up, and letting it go. Visit GetRootedRadio.com if you've missed any part of this hit show. And tune in on TransformationTalkRadio.com to live fearlessly in your more and powerfully rooted in your unlimited yes. For more information and to work with Erica directly, visit GetRootedRadio.com.
That's GetRootedRadio.com and get ready to live it up, love it up, and let it go.